Hey, welcome to a gentle yoga practice. Today we'll probably do a little bit of everything um, and let's get started. Lying on the belly. Forgot to introduce myself. My name's Kaylee. Meet me just sprawled out on your tummy. You can make a little pillow by stacking your forearms or your hands. You can drop your forehead straight down against that little pillow that you've created. Or for some folks, myself included, it feels good to bring the arms down by the sides of the body and let your shoulders round and melt, turning your head off to either direction. And just to feel once you allow your body to settle in, feel the hips opening in the front as well as the back. If it feels available, untuck the toes. So you've got a gentle stretch in the top of the foot and the front of the ankle. And then see if you can breathe a little bit deeper into your belly, letting your inhales gently kind of press you against the mat or the surface that you're practicing on. And as you exhale, just allowing yourself to melt, letting go of any holding or gripping in the lower back. If you've nodded your head off to either side, go ahead and switch the direction, just bringing balance into the neck and the shoulders. We'll be here for about five more rounds of breath. Stay here, take one more long inhale, breathe down into your lower back, maybe down into the sides of the hips or even the thighs. And then open mouth, exhale, let it go with a sigh. Start to walk your feet a little closer together. Bring your arms down by your side, but turn the palms to face down. Fingertips are pointing back toward the back of the neck. Look straight down at the top of the mat. So you've lifted your head just a little bit, but you're reaching the crown of the head in line with the rest of your spine. So you haven't tipped the chin up real high, the neck, the back of the neck stays open here. Start to float your arms away from the floor, pull the fingertips back behind you. You might go ahead and take a little bend in the elbows and shrug the shoulders a couple times. But feel that movement, feel that action. Lift it here, keep pressing into the tops of the feet. All you're gonna do is bring the back of your left hand to the back of your head. So the left palm is just very gently resting against the back of your head, left elbows pointing to the left. And then bring the back of your right hand to the small of your back. So the right palm faces up, left palm faces down, elbows are pointing in opposite directions. Hopefully you've got a little bit more space than I do. We're just gonna alternate. So sweep the arms out to the side and then reverse. Left hand comes to the small of the back, palm of the right hand to the back of the head. Do that a couple times, nice and smooth. Continue to take deep breaths. If this ever feels like too much in your spine, feel free to drop your head down but continue to take that motion with the arms here, mobilizing the shoulder through all of its natural ranges of motion on your back. Let's go ahead and end with your right hand at the back of the head. Lift, lift, lift on an in-breath. And then find Sphinx Pose, separating your feet nice and wide, turning your palms face up. Let the fingers just gently curl. It feel good to get a little bit of movement through the feet and the hips here. Let the eyes rest on one spot that's right past the tip of your nose or close your eyes down. 
And then coach yourself very gently just to come back to the breath. In your sphinx pose, you can stay exactly as you are, or if it would feel good, take some small little half circles with the head and the neck. So chin toward chest and then right ear toward right shoulder, chin toward chest, left ear toward left shoulder. Continue to take deep breaths in and out of your nose or at any point that it feels natural. You can breathe in through your nose and take an open mouth exhale. It's a nice way to relax the jaw. If you're taking neck circles, Go ahead and come through the center and then lift your chin, lift your nose, take a breath in, opening up the front of the throat and then slowly lower all the way down, stack your palms to make a little pillow for your forehead. And let the spine release and relax back into its natural curves. Finding space around the lumbar vertebra. When you're ready, press to hands and knees, finding a tabletop position. There's no rush to get there, but when you land, tuck the toes under, so stretch out the soles of the feet here. As you find cow, tilt the tailbone up, keep the arms straight, but drop your belly, pull your chest forward, broadening out the collarbones, maybe the chin lifts, opening up the throat. Stay on the balls of the feet as you find cat. Tuck the tailbone, Curl the chin towards your chest and then press the mat away with your hands. Two more times, nice and slow, focusing on the movement of your shoulders and cow really gently drawing the shoulder blades down and together. And then in cat, letting the shoulder blades pull away from the spine and kind of hunch up toward the ears. Three more times, moving between these two shapes. Maybe linking the shapes to your breathing. So you can sync up one of these poses to an in-breath and the other one to an exhale. Let's do two more. Switch the breath that you've synced to which shape. So if you've been inhaling in cow, and I invite you to take a big breath in as you find cat this time. Breathe into the back of your ribs. Find some space there. And then find a nice neutral spine here. Untuck your toes and paddle out the tops of the feet, perhaps. From hands and knees, let's go ahead and retuck the toes under and find a downward facing dog. In down dog, you might feel good finding a little bit of bend in one of your knees and then the other. Might also feel nice just to stay still and take a few rounds of breath, really pressing the hands down pushing into whatever part of your foot is connected to your mat. From downward facing dog, we're gonna bring the right knee forward behind the right wrist and set up for swan. So in swan pose, we keep the chest lifted. You might swivel the hips a little bit side to side here. And then let's bring the uh, left hand to the sole of the right foot. See if you can kind of clasp the sole of the right foot there with your left hand, find a little bit of balance. If this anchor point doesn't work for you, you're gonna bring your left fingers out and to the left a little bit. Either way, we're gonna take that right hand and bring the palm back to the back of the head again, point the right elbow out to the side so the neck is aligned. Instead of finding a big back bend here, keep the neck aligned and point the right elbow to the right. And stay there or play around with bringing your right hand between your shoulder blades, right fingers are pointing downward. If you're there, keep pulling that left hip forward gently so we're not pinching anything in the lower back. And then when you're ready, we're gonna turn this into sleeping swan. So release the fingers of the right hand and the fingers of the left hand and then start to crawl your arms forward. 
You can take that same option, creating a pillow for your forehead by stacking your hands or even stacking your fists. Or it might feel nice to rest the forehead straight down. We'll be here for about five rounds of breath. And give yourself one more round of breath here. And then start to lift the head, the neck, the chest. Keep the right leg where it is as you walk your fingers back. We're going to shift the weight over toward the right sit bone. Bring your left leg around in front of you and then create a sling for the sole of your left foot with your hands. And play around with straightening that left leg out in front of you. Or I'm really enjoying like a happy baby variation of this. So you can kind of draw that left knee toward the left underarm outside of the left ribs and keep the spine nice and long. From here, whether you've got the leg straight or you've got your knee bent with me, bring the right hand outside of the left foot or outside of the left knee and open your left arm. Bring your left arm in line with the shoulder or a little bit lower and then start to pull that left arm, not back, but behind you. So toward what was the right side of your space. Feel the left shoulder blade hugging toward your spine. And then do the same thing with your right hand. Push that left foot over to the right, feeling right shoulder blade hugging toward midline. Stay here with your arms, but slowly nod your chin from shoulder to shoulder. So rotating through the cervical spine, Breathing, unclenching your jaw. We're going to set up Gomukhasana. So that left knee is going to come on top of the right knee. And maybe it doesn't quite get there. However you want to sit with the left leg on top of the right is great. You might be able to kind of wiggle and stack the knees. Otherwise, you can just stack your left leg on top of the right leg in a cross-legged position. Go means cow and muka is face. So this is cow face pose, cow face asana. You're gonna take your right arm up, bend your right elbow, and then reach the left hand back behind you. Maybe you catch the fingers. That bind may or may not work out, but sit back a little bit into your sit bones. If the fingers don't wanna reach, you can always hold on to that right elbow with your left hand, or I'll turn around, you can kind of clasp the fabric of your shirt between your hands and give a little tug there. Try and find a little bit more of an upright position in your chest. So lengthen the lower back, back in space, even if that means the left knee lifts a little bit. Reach the crown of the head up toward the ceiling as you root down into your sit bones. Set your eyes to one spot or close your eyes down and breathe into where you feel the stretch. Let's see if you can move right toward those spaces that feel a little tight. Giving yourself permission to Choose a version of this shape, of this stretch that feels productive. So important that we dose things in life appropriately, including a stretch. It's possible to take it into a range of motion that's no longer really gonna do us a lot of good. Be really honest with yourself. Stay curious about the sensations. Is this amount of stretch, is this amount of effort doing your body good or has your ego gotten involved in a way that might not be in the long run the most helpful? And just sending yourself some compassion no matter what. And stay here, take another big breath in and then gently, slowly 
release the arms, bring the hands back behind you, sit back a little bit, untangle the left leg and then the right leg. Might feel good to windshield wiper the feet in and out or to paddle the knees up and down. Just find a little reset. Notice any difference in the right and the left hip. And then you're going to take your time to find downward facing dog or hands and knees, whatever you'd prefer, so that we can set up for half pigeon on the left. If you take hands and knees, you might take cat cow or body circles. There's zero rush to get there, but when you're ready, left knee comes forward. Remember, we're setting up actually for swan at first. I got a little ahead of myself. So lowering the hips, but keeping the chest lifted, maybe shifting from side to side through your hips to find that spot where your body feels balanced. And then your option is to bring your right hand to the sole of that front left foot, kind of press that foot away from you. You can also always bring the right fingertips up and over to the right. Left arm's gonna reach up, bring the palm of the left hand back behind your head, pointing that elbow out to the left. And then notice if you're arching here. For today, I'm gonna encourage you to find one long line of energy from your right toes back behind you, right big toe, all the way up that right leg, all the way through the spine to the crown of the head. Soft eyes or close your eyelids down as you breathe. When you're ready, we're gonna release that left arm, bring the left fingers forward, right fingers forward. Take your time to work your way into your sleeping swan, making a pillow or extending the arms. And then dropping in once you land to a connection with your breath. Two more breaths here, letting prana and energy move through your body on your breath. And sending nutrients into areas that feel tight or that could just use a little TLC and attention. And take your time to start to walk the fingers back. Keep the left knee bent as you lift the chest. We're gonna shift weight to the left sit bone or hip as you bring right leg forward. Create a sling for the sole of your right foot, lift the chest, and then either take that half baby variation of this shape by bending the right knee and drawing it toward the right underarm, or it might feel good for some of y'all to straighten the leg. Maybe you take a moment to explore each version, just that slight difference can make a, pretty significant impact on our experience in our body. And sometimes it is those little changes or those little details that compound over time and make a, a pretty, pretty big difference. All right, we're gonna take that twist, bringing left hand to the outside of the right foot or the knee as you reach the right arm back, sit tall through your spine. And then just like you did before, push that right leg to the left, Pull your right arm back in space to the left side of your room, your mat. And stay here just a couple more rounds of breath, sitting tall on your inhale. Notice if you've shifted your weight over to the left a bunch and then pull your belly button in toward your low back on your exhale. Slowly look forward, start to work your way into Gomukhasana, cow face. Right knee comes on top of left knee or right leg steps up in a cross-legged position. I'll wiggle the hips around a little bit in space, maybe roll the shoulders out. And then we're gonna take 
Nope. Left arm comes up this time and right hand reaches for the left fingers back behind you. Remember, you have options if this bind just isn't it. Sometimes it's not. You can catch the top elbow or you can hold on to the fabric of your shirt. Let's see if you can bring some awareness into the back of the neck here. It's really common for us to kind of hunch forward or alternately to arch the neck and tilt the chin up and work to find something that feels neutral. So there's natural curves in your spine. There's a gentle one in the neck and a gentle one in the lower back. And then around those natural curves, see if you can create a little bit more length, rooting down through your sit bones lengthening up through the crown of the head. Just here for a couple more breaths. When you're ready, release the bind. Take your time, feel that little rebound as the elbows, wrists, shoulders open up. Fingers come back behind you, shift your weight back so that you can straighten the legs out. Pedal out the knees or toggle the feet in and out, let them slay open. And then when you're ready, we're gonna to come to one more seated position. Either find a seat on your shins in a kneeling position or sit cross-legged, whatever's gonna work for you is great. Close your eyes down, bring your palms face down onto your thighs or your lap, somewhere that you can forget about them. And then start from your hips and your lower back. See if you can create a little bit more alignment and stability. Notice if you're leaning forward or back through the hips, can you bring the pelvis into a more neutral position? Very gently draw your belly in, find space in the lower back. So slowly starting to move your awareness up the spine, up the torso, to the sides of your waist. Bring your awareness to your ribs in relation to your pelvis. Are your ribs jutting forward? You tuck the floating ribs in ever so slightly and sit back just a little bit so that the ribs are stacked directly over your pelvis. Bring your awareness to your shoulders. Maybe notice that the shoulders are rounded forward or if you've created a back bend, again, draw the ribs down, tucking the rib cage back in line with the pelvis, and then roll the shoulders back so that the shoulders are resting over the hips. And keep moving your awareness up through the neck. Nose and chin are level. And feel that the ears gently move back over the inner shoulders. And then just continue to scan all the way up to the crown of the head, relaxing the muscles around your eyes, your brow, your temples. And then inhale. Reach your arms out toward your side, palms face up, and then sweep your arms up over your head. Stack wrists, ears, shoulders, and hips. Breathe in. Open mouth, exhale as you bend your elbows into a cactus or a goalpost shape. Blink your eyes open. Keep your forearms slightly angled. So they're not straight up and down, not perpendicular to the floor or the ceiling. There's a little angle there. And then just hug shoulder blades together and release a little. Hug shoulder blades together and release a little. So we're gonna take a couple little pulses here. Notice if you lean forward, see if you can find that nice alignment again. 
And it may actually be fine to play around with leaning forward as long as you feel that that spine is still in its natural alignment. We're looking to engage the muscles between the shoulder blades, right in the middle of the back, right behind your heart space for four, three, two, give the elbows a good squeeze here and then reach the arms up, look up, press your palms toward the ceiling and then release the hands down by your side. Great work. Meet me on your back. We're going to come into hammock pose. So the knees will stay bent. Maybe you hug the knees into your chest for a moment and draw some circles over your hips and your sacrum. But eventually, we'll work into a shape called hammock. You can tee or cactus your arms. Feet and knees might be close together. They might be mats distance apart. But just start to move the knees side to side, maybe a few inches in each direction to start. Notice how the hips and the pelvis feel. Feel free to adjust. Maybe walk the feet further away from your hips or closer. Continue to toggle your knees side to side. And you can keep the nose pointing straight up or if it would feel good, nod your chin the opposite direction of your knees. Finding some rotation through the spine, the hips, maybe the neck. Breathe in and breathe out. You can slow this movement down a little bit. Find just enough muscular activation to feel that you're stable and supported, but not so much that you're holding on to tension unnecessarily. And when you're ready, maybe one limb at a time, one leg at a time, one arm at a time, work your way towards Shavasana. You can continue to take that hammock version of a spinal twist for as long as it feels good. And just allowing yourself to close your gentle practice today in a place where you're willing to just really tune in to the sensations in your body, the good sensations and the sensations that maybe don't feel so good. And you welcome whatever physical experience is here. And along with that, you welcome your breath. Just letting it move naturally without controlling it. Prana flowing through the entire body from the surface of your skin all the way to your very center. you happen to have more time to linger in your practice today, feel free to shut off the recording, stay for as long as it feels right. If you're ready to move on with your day, go ahead and reach the arms up over your head. Maybe you bring the legs together, point the feet, drink in a big breath. And then exhale, let it go. Take your time to meet me in a seat. You can rock to a seated position or roll to the side first. And just very simply thanking yourself for carving out some time for your body, for your mind, maybe making a commitment to continue to take care of yourself in whatever way you best can for today. Thanks for sharing your practice. See you soon.